<laughs> Testing one, two, one, two, one, two. All right, hey, mighty companions online and in front of me, welcome to a course in miracles. And like I've said often, it's called a course in miracles because it says that we really uh, allow ourselves to have a right answer and a truthful answer and a loving answer um, and a way of looking at things that's a miracle. So we call it a course in miracles right here on Facebook Live. It's always good to have my worldwide brothers and sisters working with me and helping me remember the truth and helping you remember the truth. And we're going to start out to allow people to get centered. We're going to start out with our theme song, which is uh, one of the workbook lessons in A Course in Miracles, which is, I am not a victim of the world. I see. <laughs> I am not a victim of the world. So pay particular attention to the lyrics from Brother John Christmas. This is based on lessons in A Course in Miracles. And if you want to download this song and the rest of the music that he's written based on the Course in Miracles, you just go to johnchristmas.com, www.johnchristmas.com. Here we go. Oh, here we go. I just did it a minute ago. So we'll see. Technical difficulties starting right now. I'm not a victim of the cord I see. I'm not, not a victim, victim of, of the MP3. I'm not a victim of my MP3 player, <laughs> you know. Okay, let's see what the deal is. Just played a second ago. That's why. Well, just keep breathing and use it as an opportunity to <laughs> just use it as an opportunity to let yourself <laughs> tune in. That's, that is so bizarre. I just I was just playing it a minute ago, and all of a sudden I at some at some level have decided that I'm yeah, have decided that I'm not going to hear it. Okay. Wow. Okay. So much for that. I hope you enjoyed that song. It was very powerful. And uh, it's being telepathically <laughs> sent right from you from mind to mind, okay? Um, you're not a victim of the world you see. You're not a victim of the world you see. Why is it that you're not a victim of the world you see? Because it's up to you to determine how you're going to see the world you see. It's up to you to determine how you want to see the world that you see. And the world that you see and how you see the world, don't you know that it is dependent on your perception? It's your perception that's determining how you see, and then the way you see things determine how you feel. So your feelings are coming from your perceptions. They're not coming from the situation or circumstance that you think is upsetting you or even making you happy. So whether you think you're feeling great right now, you're feeling great now really because of the way you're seeing things. If you feel horrible right now, you're feeling horrible because of the way that you see things. None of the events or physical events in your life are causing the way that you feel. You are causing the way that you feel by the meaning that you're giving to the events that are happening in your life right now. That is one of the most important things to recognize if you want to stop seeing yourself as a victim, which means you're not a victim of the way you see things. If I say I'm not a victim of the world I see, I'm not a victim of the way I see things because who, who is determining the way that I see things? Who's determining the way that I see things? I guess what? It's me. It's me. So at some point, you have to stop blaming your mother, and you have to stop blaming your father, and you have to stop blaming your childhood, and you have to stop blaming the people around you for how you're feeling. 
because you're the one that's giving every single solitary thing in your life the meaning that it has for you. So if you want to get the Course in Miracles right now, we're going to start out with the guidelines for the Course, especially if you're here for the first time. These are the only rules of the class. The rules of a Course in Miracles are, is you do not have to believe the ideas. You need not believe the ideas. You need not believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist, so just understand that some of the things I say you may actively resist. People usually actively, actively resist anything they hear that's opposite to what they believe. Agree? Usually when people hear things that's completely different from what they believe, they go, that's hard to believe. And they resist it. So new means different. So if a person says, I'm ready to get a new way of looking at my life, and I'm ready to get a new way of looking at my relationships, they're saying, I want to hear something different from what I'm telling myself. I'm ready to hear something new means I'm ready to hear something different. So I'm going to ask, so I might be saying some things, hopefully, that's different. Different from what you believe, especially if there's some area of your life that you know that you are ready to have a change in. So whatever area of your life that you know you're ready to have a change in and you know you're dissatisfied with that area of your life, that's the area you need to actually hear something new and you need to hear something different. So the Course in Miracles may tell you something different, something that's different from what you believe is true. So some of the ideas you might resist, some of them you might find hard to believe. Some of the things I say may startle you. Of course, a miracle says you aren't asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all because you judge and analyze so that you can figure out whether or not it's something that works. We judge and analyze to kind of come to the conclusion about whether or not we're going to use what we're learning. So the Course in Miracles says the easiest way to find out whether or not what it's saying to you is true, is to use it. Because it's only working with, and it's primarily working with your perception. So this is a class that works on the way that you see things. It's a class that gives you another way to perceive your experience. Um, then it goes on to tell us, if you use the ideas, the ideas will show you that they are true. So if I use it, that's how I'll know that I'm true. So are we clear? You don't need to believe it. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to welcome it. You might resist it. You might find it hard to believe. But if you use it, you'll see that it's true. In 42 years of sharing it and working with people, I know that this is true. So when someone tells me that they haven't been getting the results of the Course in Miracles, quite frankly, I don't really believe they've been using it and applying it. Because I've never seen a person that applied this material consistently that did not start to experience more of the peace and the awakening that it's talking about. What happens with the Course in Miracles a lot is because sometimes when you first look at it, it, it looks like English, but when you read it, it, you don't know what the hell you just got through reading. Then what happens is that, like you said earlier, the temptation is not to read it. But that's just like saying, and I've said many times before, that's, like, that's just like saying, I don't know how to bake a cake. I just got the recipe book for how to bake a cake, but I'm expecting the cake, but I haven't read the recipe. And not only have I not read the recipe, I haven't even gotten the ingredients that the recipe says I need to get, but yet I'm looking for things to change. I'm looking for things to, 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 to turn out the way that I want them to be, which the Course says most people are saying, how can I remain exactly the way I am without going through the suffering that entails? How can I stay exactly the way I am and then have new relationships, new financial situation, new career situations, more, but I want to stay exactly as I am and show me how I can do that but get a different result. So we're going to talk about fear and conflict. How do you deal with fear and conflict? Where does fear and conflict come and how do you let it go? So that can be fear about anything that can be conflict about anything. So you might have some areas of your life that you feel some type of conflict about. So this is going to be helpful to me because I need to know exactly how to deal with that. And that's going to be on page 28 in the Course in Miracles text for those of you who have the book. It's on page 28 
in the Course in Miracles text, in the blue Course in Miracles book, the Foundation for Inner Peace version of A Course in Miracles. The Foundation for Inner Peace version of A Course in Miracles. So right before that paragraph, right before that section of fear and conflict starts, it has a very important prayer that I really want to say and I want to share with you right now. And that prayer is, uh, in a situation, it says you can do much on behalf, do you know that you can do much on behalf of your own healing and the healing of other people if? Do you know you can do, do you know that you can do a lot on behalf of your happiness and other people's happiness if? in a situation calling for help, in a situation calling for love, you think of a situation that's calling, that's, that's a call for help and a call for love, think of it this way. So if you're in a situation calling for help, what should you do, Earl? You should think of it the way that I'm about to tell you to think of it, which is, first of all, I'm here to be truly helpful. That's why, that's why I'm in your life, I'm here to be truly helpful. So this is what you say to other people, too. I'm here to be truly helpful. What are you here to do? I'm here to represent him who sent me. Who is him who sent me? That's it's spirit. It's the creator. It's, 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 it's that which you truly are, which we'll break down in a coarse way by just saying love. So this book is talking about love, and it's talking about fear, and how to choose for love, and how to let go of your fear. So I'm here in this room to represent love. Love sent me. Truth sent me here. I don't have to worry about what to do. What? You don't have to worry about what to do. What? I don't have to worry about what to do. What is it? What is the, what is the other thing that you don't have to worry about? It says you don't have to worry about what to say, and you don't have to worry about what to do. So why, I'm here to help you, but I don't have to worry about what to say. I don't have to worry about what to do. Why is it that I don't have to worry about what to say, and I don't have to worry about what to do? I don't have to worry about what to say, and I'm not worried, have to worry about what to do because spirit that sent me will direct me. Love and truth that sent me. I don't have to, see, if I say I'm a teacher of the course, let's say, for instance, and I'm ready to follow the lessons in love and truth that this course is teaching, well, then, if I'm here to share that, if I'm here to be a demonstration of the love and the peace that this is representing, then I don't have to worry about what to say because it's here. <laughs> I don't have to worry about what to do. Well, my course is telling me what to do. It's telling me what to do, and it's telling me what to say. That's why I always suggest to people, if you really want to go to a higher level of consciousness, stop teaching yourself and start trying to learn from something that's more intelligent than you and is greater than you, but it's also within you. I'll say that again. The, the most important thing that a conscious being wants to do, they live, they live by guidance. They live by guidance, by getting direction. Just like when you're using the GPS, you're following it because it's guiding you to the destination you want to go to, but you don't know how to get there. So you just trust that the GPS does, and you just follow the guidance. You don't pull over to the side of the road and say, explain to me why I should make a left turn uh, three blocks from here. And where did that street come from? Who was it named after? <laughs> What kind of pavement does it have? You don't analyze it, you just follow it. So, so people make their whole spiritual path hard because they think that it means they have to use their own wisdom in terms of deciding what to do or what not to do. And the Course is saying, in any course, you just have to follow the guidance that you're given. And so therefore, I know what to say and I know what to do when I'm looking at you and when I'm looking at you because I have a curriculum that I'm following that's telling me what to say to you and what to do with you. So I, that's why I don't have to worry about it. What's the next line? I'm content to be wherever he wishes. I'm content, content to be wherever my higher self, my spiritual self. What is my higher self? Who is my spiritual self? The part of me that's loving and sane. The part of me that's not crazy. That's the higher self. That's the spiritual self. So I'm con content to be wherever the divine wishes. Why am I willing to be content being here right now? Because I know love, spirit, my teacher is with me right now. My inner guidance is with me right now. So I will be healed as I let spirit teach me to heal. 
So I'm going to be healed as much as to the degree that I'm willing to learn how to be a healer myself. So I will be healed as I let spirit teach me to heal. I will be loving as I let truth teach me to be loving. A correct loving perception has to be learned. It's not something that you just know how to do immediately. You have to be taught how to be sane or to remember your sanity just as much as you were taught how to become insane. Most people don't realize that they're not acting according to their, to their true natures. They're acting according to the programming they've gotten since the day they were born. Soon as you're born, everybody starts to describe to you and give you descriptions about what the world is, what the world is about, what's right, what's wrong, who you should like, who you should not like. So by the time you get to the point that you can make all of the erroneous interpretations that the world gives you, then you become a member of society. Okay, a member of society is simply someone that's joined in with the collective ideas and thoughts of that culture that they're in. And if that culture that they're in is not reflecting love and peace and truth, then they're going to also not do it. So I'm going to be more loving, and I will be healed as I let my teacher teach me how to heal. I'm going to be more sane with you as I let sanity teach me. So far, does that make any sense to everybody? Okay, so fear and conflict is the same as saying fear is conflict. So when you're in conflict, you're in fear, and when you're in fear, you're in conflict. So do you have any area at all in your life that you feel a lack of peace, complete peace in, that you have some level of conflict or some level of fear, that you wish were different in some way? Would everybody in here be willing to admit that that's true? That there's a part of them that'll go, I wish this were different, and then I would be happy. Or they say, I wish you were different, then I'd be happy. That's called most relationships, <laughs> right? I wish you were different, and then I would be happy. That's the, that is the premise that the Course in Miracles says will absolutely guarantee you'll never be happy. When someone else speaks or acts differently, then I'll be happy. That's the one the Course says, if you follow that plan, which is the plan that unhappy people follow, <laughs> then you won't be happy. So how can you tell the plan unhappy people following? You know at some level they're waiting for something or some circumstance outside themselves to change, and then that's when they're going to be happy. Mm -hmm. And then the Course in Miracles says, uh, Take, do me slowly. That's why I always suggest uh, that you take my classes that are watching it online. You can review it later because it's posted. And then li try to listen to it at least four times because you have to give yourself new thoughts to replace the thoughts that you don't like. You have to give yourself replacement thinking. Replacement thinking, right? So then the Course says, well, take me one line at a time. And it says, take me slowly. Okay, that's exactly the way I like to do it. Okay, so being afraid seems to be un involuntary. What does that mean? Being afraid seems like it's something beyond your control. Sometimes it looks like anger is beyond your control. Sometimes it looks like fear is beyond. You meant to be sane, but you just threw them off a building. So you know that sometimes it looks like your anger is out of control. It seems like your fear can be involuntary. Uh, but I've already stated that only constructive acts should be voluntary. So what is it that I need to learn how to do without even thinking about it, involuntary? I, I, I need to be constructive and beneficial to you without even thinking about it. It's just the natural way I am that I want to bring more peace and more healing and more that. joy. You didn't understand it? Is that me? Yeah, that's you. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. 
Well, it's okay if you don't understand it. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you, Siri. Shut up. You need to know That's right. That's right. That's right. So much, uh, so, so much uh, they don't respond unless you say, hey, Siri. Right? Uh, but then I think that, that, that Siri was speaking for most people that's listening to me. I, I don't understand. Right? It never so, talks to me. Yeah, I know. Well, Siri and I got that. Yeah. yeah, I did that. Yeah. Siri, Siri pretty high. Okay, so, so, so let, me, let me get this straight. I'm not interested in how fast I go. I'm interested in hearing what, I, what I'm being told because I want to make, have the recipe of peace. So first of all, uh, not being a pain in the butt and being a person that helps people and bring joy to people, that should be involuntary. It's ridiculous that we have to be trained to treat, to treat each other kindly and humanely and nicely. It should be involuntary. It should be just the way that I have learned to be. Okay. Then the Course says, my control, your higher self's control, love's control, or you can say Jesus of, Jesus of the Course's control. Um, it says it can take over everything that doesn't matter. So you want your divine self, your spiritual self, the part of you that's sane. You want it to take over everything that doesn't matter. And you also can follow guidance in everything else if you so choose. So it says my control can take over everything that doesn't matter. Love's control can take over everything that doesn't matter. While its guidance can direct everything that does matter if you choose. So I'm going to ask my divine self, my higher self, my spiritual self, my God, my God self, whatever word you need for a higher power, I want it to direct everything that's happening in my life. I want the part of me that's sane and loving and peaceful and aware. I want that part, that divine part, I ask for it right now. I want it to, to direct everything that matters in my life because fear can't really be controlled by somebody outside of you. Don't you know that fear has to be self-controlled? I am the one who's in control of how much fear I feel. You don't control my fear. I control my fear. No one else is controlling your upset anger, but you have the power to control your fear. But what's preventing your higher self, what's preventing your divine self from guiding you and giving its control? Fear. So fear prevents you from being controlled by love. Fear prevents you from being controlled by joy and happiness. If I'm afraid, I'm not feeling joyful. If I'm afraid, I'm not feeling peaceful. If I'm afraid, I'm not feeling happy. And so if I'm afraid, then that's preventing the divine part of me to control me. Because I keep people always saying, I want to give this to God. I want to give this to a higher power. Your fear is preventing you from surrendering it because usually a person's fear will make them try to take over and be in charge and be in control of the situation. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. the, ones, the ones people become afraid, that's when they really try to take charge, mm -hmm. right? So really their fear is preventing them from being guided by the part of them that's not afraid. Okay. So what does the presence of fear show you? The presence of fear shows you that you have risen, you have raised body thoughts to the level of the mind. In other words, you don't recognize that it's your thoughts that's creating your experience and it's not your physical experience that's creating how you feel. It's your thoughts that's creating how you feel. So it's not about your body. It's really about your mind. It's the person that you're in a relationship with is the same as saying, I'm in a relationship with this person's mind. I'm in a relationship with this person's thinking. And if I say I'm going to be in a partnership with a person, I'm saying I am willing to experience the results of that person's thinking with them. 
If, if you're with that person and they're thinking they need to rob a bank, then you're going to experience the effects of them rob, wanting to rob a bank with them. That's going to have some kind of effect on you. So think about that the next time you're ready to get into a deep relationship with someone. It's sort of like the analogy that comes to mind for me is how somebody else's credit score that you're joining in a relationship with or marriage is going to affect you now. The way they did their credit, the ones you join with them, is now going to have an effect on you. Does that make sense to everybody what I'm talking about? That's true about everything. If you're hooking up with somebody just because their body looks good but they're a psycho, <laughs> then you're going to have to probably experience the drama that you're going to go through as a result of dealing with a mind that's insecure and jealous. So you get to some point that you ask yourself, is my desire to get this body, is that, is that more important to me than the sanity and the mind and the thinking of the person that I'm going to be with who has this body? And we know what you've chosen in the past, you don't have to say. <laughs> the body. <laughs> I just bring them to one of your classes. <laughs> they work on their mind later. <laughs> I'll get around to your mind. No, I'll get around to it. You know. <laughs> in the not yet. 